All right. Welcome back, fam. I am back. On this particular stream, I have a thank you video to those people that made generous donations. We are back. We are live. The fam is here. Inside Star Citizen is here. Inside Star Citizen review is here. I'm still tweaking things with the system. I let everybody know what was going on. Obviously, this is getting released onto the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's nice to see you guys. You guys have voted unanimously to put the chat in the actual Inside Star Citizen review, which I completely wholeheartedly endorse and agree. Some people were like, ah, it's too messy. I don't want to see the chat when we watch it. But that was a that that that's a minority. Those were people who were way cranky. <laughs> we went with the cool people. The 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 chill people who were like, dudes. Where's our where's our voices at? We don't know what you're talking about, DG. Like when you respond to people, we can't see the chat. So we're putting the chat in here and we're going to watch Inside Star Citizen together. Together. We watched the the last week's one on this morning's stream which I will release. Also, it's really important for the the alien What's up, DC? to have representation. It oh, adds good. extra depth to the gameplay and to visuals. There are all these weird and wonderful races, and they each want to have their own style and influence. But, you know, obviously with human stuff, a lot of it is quite familiar, whereas the alien races, that really is an opportunity for us to sort of push the boundaries of the Star Citizen visuals. All right, and we were talking about this today on today's stream. We were saying that the only ship devoted to industry that was an alien ship is the BMM, the Banu Merchantman. That every other alien ship out right now is all attack-oriented, attack-based. I'm pretty sure that that is the truth. I'm going to stand behind the fam here and say that, that I agree with that. So perhaps, perhaps alien ships with other purposes? I mean, they look good. We all love the alien tech. We do. But maybe, maybe we just expand a little bit on the other kind of areas the gameplay yeah, i'm just saying uh there will eventually be a xion transport ship yes and we also know mist kind of goes into the xion area as well we talked about the refining ship that we're all all looking forward to let me scoot your chat over here just a bit there we go guys so everybody can see you oh jamie says mining alien ship uh, i really like the how the tavarin race and their ships look uh, it is very different to the other ships in game and at the moment the Tavarin only really have the prowler and that's a drop ship so it's not suited for a, a wide range of players so we wow. created the talon to be a, a fighter counterpart to it so the talon is already well into production uh, it's already flyable in engine and it's great to get a concept straight into engine what, what the price of this bad boy is going to be in between so we worked really hard on the visuals and the materials. By the way, ship. Paul Jones, thank you. Paul Jones was one of the donators to help me build the system that I needed. Thank you, Paul Jones. Thank you. You can see that it's very different to anything that we've done in the past. The silhouette, that's a really striking silhouette hanging in the sky. And, you know, to form that sort of silhouette $90. with the ship, you know, we've, For the talent. we've built the wings. We've got the strong shoulders and those wings, you know, when they're in full spread, know. you could see the feathers. And we've got this. I love the looks of the barn paint ships. I love that design. It's very much them. reminiscent of birds like starlings. Oh. And that sort of runs through the ship. Big fan the of, of the Tavarn. A fighter that has some stealth elements to it. So it excels at jumping in, striking hard, and then getting out of the fight using its agility to escape returning fire. And it falls into that trope It's like our version of the cannon. arrow. Um, it is very agile, it has very low armor, and it has relatively big guns for its size. It comes with two gimbaled size 3 ballistic weapons as default. Oh. Uh, that means it has a size 4 hardpoint there. So oh. you have the choice of going with the default loadout of size 3 gimbaled, or you can really maximize Last your time I heard it was size change. 2. Last time I heard it was size 2. They upgraded to size 3? Huh. To size 4 weapons. It also comes equipped with a 
missile rack on each wing, so you do have some missiles, but it really isn't the focus of the ship. It's all about the guns. And I didn't know about the missiles? The other area of the town that provided us with a challenge internally uh, is the whole ejection cockpit canopy setup, because a lot of our ships, you get in, you get on the seat, and the seat ejects. This is the whole entire like, dashboard and flight controls eject out with you, um, and that's something that we haven't done in ships before. We've had the Whoa. ability to fire Now apart, that's like a cool little cockpit. freaking escape pod slash ship. When going from landing to takeoff, this ship is going to transform before your eyes. And it's going to go from... Oh, man. Position I love... The listen. Prey of I love the tech behind the Tavar and, like, the, 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 how, the, how the window on the prow, it goes... You know, and you can see out of it. I love it. I love that tech. I love the movable parts and pieces of the Tavar and ships, man. Like, the Prowler is just a sick ship. It's just the design of the ship. I love it. Uh, this is awesome. I love the idea of this. This, like, escape pod slash ship. Uh, this is awesome. In flight. So the That's awesome. Expanding. The feathers will be revealed. And in terms of when you're flying around, you're going to have the sun glinting off that iridescent paint. I mean, it's just going to look amazing. While the vehicle teams use alien ships to push against the familiar evil and stretch Jared. the boundaries of what we know about the universe. <laughs> it's, evil Jared. it's evil Jared. The mocap His twin. and gameplay story animation teams work to bring as much recognizable truth and authenticity of motion as they can to the smaller story elements that permeate throughout the Squadron 42 campaign experience. The reason I got into motion capture is I wanted to tell believable stories. There's something I find quite fascinating about tricking people's emotions with, uh, you know, just the visual medium of whatever's on the screen, and motion capture plays a rather large part in that. Sometimes you can be looking at a, a head cam and just see, like, a particular moment for just half a second and know that that's going to be used and the director can see it as well. It's those exciting moments on set and being able to see scenes be birthed from the, 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 the stage itself uh, that is why I got into motion capture. What's interesting about gameplay story and, and seeing that in the game is an unintrusive way of delivering you, you know, small story elements or, or just bringing more life into the world as you walk around it. Gameplay story is uh, lots of uh, smaller scenes, not full-blown cutscenes, but also not pure gameplay either. So that could be walking into a bathroom and overhearing a conversation the user isn't necessarily a triggering per se, or they, they, they can do small things to trigger, but at the same time they're happening in the universe as a living, breathing thing. You and Yuri don't have to give us such a hard time. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that someone else I heard moaning about having to recall all the Diags last shift? Yeah, okay. I haven't been the best either, but complaining's one thing. We used to complain about Nolan all the time too. I don't know, I think she could do a good job if we helped. So I think the reason why motion capture is such a huge benefit for um, the game for Squadron 42 that, and Yeah, Star I thought she looked familiar. She's from Game of Thrones, right? We're able to shoot in a very short amount She's of time. She's the sister. Huge yeah. Huge range of animations. Um, and I think if you look I at dug her. I, dug, moment, I dug her character. Like yeah, in Game of Thrones, I totally dug her character. animations for this game. And that it's only because we're able to use motion capture to capture data very quickly and deliver that data to the teams very quickly. So I think a common misconception with motion capture is that we capture all of this data and then it just seamlessly works with the engine. That definitely isn't the case. After the mocap shoot's finished, I first need to use a, a wonderful tool the mocap team have written to actually make my selections, which is to choose which takes I actually want and which parts of those takes I want, whether they're going to be recorded and so on and so forth. This data isn't always necessarily super clean as well, so uh, it's the job of the mocap team to be able to track and retarget that data um, in order to then deliver it to the animators who can then do a final pass and get it into game. So doing pickup shoots is quite a natural part of the process, really. Um, all of the original content that we got uh, right. for the gameplay story was captured uh, some time ago, and the game has progressed a lot since then. Um, we just didn't always have answers to questions way back when the, the stuff was shot. For example, the other day we were doing pickups for a character who had to usher the player into a vent, and uh, the original data for all of this kind of left that NPC 
bystanding, not doing a lot. Whereas with the pickups that we've done now, she actually has a lot more life and she actually you know, beckons the player to, to go in multiple times if the player doesn't decide to do so. It's small things like that that create that believability in the world. It's extremely rewarding to see uh, the finished product after you've done a shoot and it goes into game. Put a lot of hard work into getting all of the scenes, nearly 250 scenes that have been shot. I don't want to make comparisons scenes. to other games, but yeah, I definitely think what we're doing goes far and above what's been done in other games, really, in terms of uh, the immersion, the fact that somebody can be busy doing something and you can go up to them, you can have a conversation, you can break away from that conversation mid-flow and all the animations match. The people aren't rambling, talking to themselves. The whole scene is believable at the start, the beginning and the end. No, I don't think you so, You and Yuri bitch. don't have to give us such Did a hard he? time. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did, did that the dude? Did, is that what it is? About having to recall I'm not. All the Diags last shift. Yeah. Okay. I haven't been the best either. But. All right. But the, look, here's the thing. There's no way. If that is the truth, and the 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 that that particular mocap footage is out of date or not usable, there's no way they're gonna go ahead. The, the amount of money that they would need in order to uh, reshoot those scenes with the same actors, they're not gonna do that again. There's just not. So there's got to be a way that that footage is still usable somehow. There's there's just no way. There's no way that that would ever be a possibility for them to take that kind of cash and they have to reshoot with all those actors again. They wouldn't do it. There's they, they, there's just no way. That would that would be too much money, and they've got to find a way to use the the footage that they have with the mocap footage with the actors that they already shot from from that long ago. Because there's no way they could redo that again. Absolutely not. That would be just too much money. Yeah, like there's just no way. They're going to find a way to use that. They're just going to find a way to use that if that's the case. And like, if they're saying it's old for the tech or for whatever reason, they'll find a way to use that mocap footage somehow. They'll have to because there's no way they're going to be able to afford to reshoot that at all. <laughs> at all. Complaining's one thing. We used to complain about yeah, Nolan yeah, all the DC, time too. Yeah, DC. I don't know, I think she could do a good job if we helped. Some people aren't cut out for command. Sink or swim, right? Sure. But do you have to be the one who drowns her? Point taken. I'll try. <laughs> J-dubs. You ever think it's weird how much we still use all these water analogies in the Navy? All the time. Hey, look who it is. So what did we learn about this week? Well, we learned that the Talon brings more oh, avian flair to the ever-developing Way too alien short. Tavarin culture. That the work of motion capture isn't simply done when you just take off the suit. And that the Squadron 42 gameplay story team may work on the smaller elements, but they do add richness and texture to the larger campaign adventure. I right? like I liked it on, this, on the last... I like on the last Inside Star Citizen, they talked a little bit about Squadron 42. And this one, they're talking about Squadron 42. I think that, yeah, we learned that the show is missing five minutes. That's why we have this show. So we can talk a little bit more about what we saw, Killian. <laughs> like, I, I do like that they're adding some Squadron 42 blurbs here and there. I think that's because of the heat, because of the roadmap to the roadmap stuff that we're, that we're hearing a lot, um, you know, which is ju justifiable, really. And I think that heat that we're seeing being put on Cloud Imperium is a positive thing because it's going to push them in the right direction to kind of – uh, get a little bit more transparent and uh, you know the, the question of transparency is, is a, a good topic and and I talked a little bit about on this morning streams that Nubifier had done a video that that is a very well done video about transparency and I happen to agree with him on it uh, but for the most part we do see these we do see what's going on through inside star citizen which is why I like to watch it uh, but I think that a pillar talk is due. I think seeing Chris is due. I think these are things that, that the community needs. Uh, I think they'd feel a little bit more confident uh, if Chris came out and spoke frankly on some of the issues that they're, that they're having, more about the problems that they're having. Uh, maybe, maybe not so much on the progress, which is interesting. Not so much on, on the progress or the things that – perhaps have been accomplished but the but the roadblocks have like a serious and frank discussion on the roadblocks and the things that are causing delays and to be frank with 
with um, the backers. I think that that's definitely something that most of us would like to see. I know that I would, um, especially I think like a pillar talk remotely is fine. If they don't want to do it because they don't have the set, I think that's kind of silly. Um, you know, I'm just speculating. I'm not quite sure why there hasn't been a pillar talk, but I think it's uh, overdue. And I would definitely like to see Chris uh, talk candidly with with the developers. Um, hell, I'd even love to see Jared on a pillar talk. And, 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 you know, we were talking this morning about how, like, to have, you know, remember when Jared would talk with content creators directly, he'd be more of a liaison between, like, the people that were focusing on, you know, uh, the, the content on, on the content creation of with star citizen and he'd bring content creators on. I think that was, that was really fun. Uh, but his job duties have expanded to the point where like, he's, he's probably got a lot on his plate and to see like maybe somebody take those roles on or to, to have Jared talk about his job with, with the community and what he's doing with the community now and, and the issues that he's having would be awesome. Uh, you know, like I, I really want to hear like his side of things too, you know, like, Hey, these are things. And, and I don't mind when people speak candidly. I love it. I, I, in fact, I prefer it. I prefer when people speak candidly and say, okay, well, these are, these are problems. Like these are the things that we're, we're dealing with. And, uh, I think they try their best. I think they do try their best. Um, but the, you know, we're, we're very demanding. A lot of us are very demanding because we're so very passionate about the project. So I get it. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's this balance, but I, I sometimes wish that Chris would get out there and just say, Hey, here, here it is guys, <laughs> you know, and, and perhaps pin down a lot of the, the technicals on the, and the details and get in, not maybe so in depth, but just say, these are obstacles. These are our legitimate obstacles that we're having right now. Here's things we've run into. I think people would calm down a little bit, you know, there are these, there are these loops, you know, there are, there are these loops we get, we get into, you get the hype cycle goes into the, you know, to like the, the weight to then the disappointment cycle, then back to the hype cycle. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm liking that they're focusing on flight. I think the flight is moving in the right direction. I think the synergy between the pilot and the ship is very important the player, and the experience that they have flying is very, very important. So I'm, I'm glad in that respect that they're focusing on that. Uh, but, you know, we were talking about Crusader this morning. You guys that were here, we were talking about the cloud tech. We were talking about how we thought Pyro was going to be in before, well before we would see a finished uh, Orison on Crusader because of the cloud tech. But we also, we also uh, talked relative to how they dealt with Art Corp. And the obstacles, the technical hurdles and obstacles that they had with Arc Corp, all the assets that had to be loaded, the the issues with SSOCS, uh, how how in a way uh, they conquered some of these obstacles with Arc Corp, loading all these assets, which is ridiculous, and and the experience over Arc Corp is amazing right now. Like the we're not, but we're not going to see that being duplicated very much on other planets or moons in the solar system, but we will see plenty of gas giants and those gas giants are going to have to deal with cloud tech and maybe the work that's happening with crusader right now and giving us a really nice pleasant crusader not the one that we have now that's very muddled and you know it's pixelated beyond all belief because it's just so huge and we can see the striations when you get close to crusader it's it's nothing representative of, of a finished product and so this cloud tech supposedly is going to help us. And I think they, they're they working on it right now that they've got some issues because there's just so much mass to Crusader. But I think when they nail this down in the very similar way in which they had to nail down asset, um, uh, the the assets loading properly with, with our corp, uh, you know, just trying to draw a parallel here, seeing how they're going to deal with cloud tech on, on um, Crusader that, when they nail this down, they can do it for other gas giants and duplicate what they did for Crusader for other gas giants. So, woo! Are they planning on adding space whales at the gas giants? Yes. Yeah, they will. And that's going to be after they get de done with the cloud tech anarchy. <laughs> you know, I would like there to be game loops with with those space whales, you know? 
to 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 hunt them to go after them to that the, they they have like particular types of commodities off these these whales which would be awesome like different types of oils perhaps or or textures uh you know from from the hide uh you know god only knows what you could harvest from these things but that would be really cool so there are more game loops uh involved with uh crusader than some people give crusader credit for so you know they're there it was kind of funny because when we first heard about it, we were rolling our eyes like we did with bobbleheads. <laughs> but like they've justified it to me. If they can keep them inside like these gas uh, giants, I think that's kind of cool. I think it's pretty cool. So we're going to keep following up. We're in an interesting phase in development right now. And I'm glad to be back for you guys. And I'm glad that you guys were standing there the entire time by my side and you were like hey you were there i was in a down and out place and you guys picked me up and said don't worry about it send in amazing donations thank you so much i am so very grateful to have this amazing community i love you guys thank you so much i had fun tonight chilling out with you guys if you missed it we put out a earlier stream this morning a dg in the morning for you guys can check out um, I will be, uh, more prevalent now that the PC is back, got some tweaking and stuff to do, but I had a wonderful time with you guys today on the inside star citizen review It is wonderful. It is great to be back. Um, and if this is going to, uh, for those people watching on YouTube, you can go back to the original stream and you can see the thank you video that YouTube won't let me play that Twitch will. <laughs> so thank you very, very much everybody for being there for me it means the world to me and you guys really cheered me up thank you so much and i will see you on the next vid or stream fam peace out <laughs>